Okay, hi there, it's Jeff here with a, a video looking at the key monopoly diagram. It's a diagram that's a go-to one for my students. They're looking for really top marks for analysis and evaluation. And when we're discussing monopoly and economic welfare, it's really important to be able to have a diagram which you know will be an A-star standard. So let's build it up in a series of slides. Here's my uh, monopoly demand curves. Uh, my exam tip here is to draw the average and the marginal revenue curves to the y-axis, if you can, because that will help us talk about economic welfare, which is a key part of the monopoly discussion. Uh, a margin revenue, of course, uh, is uh, twice the gradient, half the average revenue curve. So you have two downward sloping uh, revenue curves there. The AR is the monopoly demand curve. Let's superimpose on some short run cost curves, marginal cost and average cost. Now, let's make an assumption, which we, of course, we, we can drop, that the monopoly firm aims to maximise profit, and you maximise profit where marginal cost meets marginal revenue. And that intersect gives you an output of Q1. If you draw up to the demand curve, that means the monopoly could charge a price P1. Now, this assumes a single price monopolist. Of course, the monopolist might be able to price discriminate, charge a different price to different groups of consumers. But for the moment, we're going to assume a monopoly charges a single price to all consumers of P1. Now, the average cost of output Q1, you use the average cost curve for that. So let's show in average cost AC1. And you can see here that the monopoly is charging a price well above unit cost. And that gives a high level of monopoly profit equal to the area P1 AB AC1. Now, label errors rather than shade them. I've shaded the diagram here just for purpose of illustration. In the exam, label areas. It's much easier than just to put those little labelled sections into the text of your answer. Now, the key point here is that monopoly charges a high price, P1, uh, price well above cost, and it means that that squeezes the consumer surplus. So I've now labelled, if we go back a slide, I've now labelled, added in there point C and point D. So at the monopoly price P1, consumer surplus is the, own, is the area CA P1. So there's the consumer surplus there shown there in green. And you can see that this is a highly profitable monopoly with limited consumer surplus. Now, crucially, the price that the monopoly is charging, P1, is well above the marginal cost of supply shown by point D. So essentially, this is one big aspect, isn't it, of monopoly power. They can charge a very high price, in theory, well above the actual marginal cost of supply and the good to the consumer. And if you think about lots of good examples of that, high energy prices, for example, or the cost of ex expensive fashion items, Brand, branded fashion items, often with that, the, you're paying for the brand, aren't you? The, the price you're paying is well above the actual supply cost of the product. Now, if price is above marginal cost, this leads to a loss of allocative efficiency. Indeed, if prices were lower, if we reduce the price from P1 down to P2, uh, then consumer welfare would improve. Uh, the level of profit would be shown by the blue area, but there would also be an increase in consumer surplus. So let's go back. If we were to charge a lower price P2, profit would be the blue shaded area, but consumer surplus would then improve. And at that price, price equals marginal cost, which is where allocative efficiency is achieved. So the argument against monopoly essentially is that they can charge high prices well above marginal cost, leading to a loss of consumer welfare. In future videos, we'll take a look at some of the arguments for and against monopoly power. But this is a really useful diagram to have in your locker for the exam. Thanks for joining in. Take care. Stay safe. Stay curious. Stay positive. See you sometime soon.